Thank you, uh, uh, musicians, Pastor Gieber. Thank you all, uh, Pastor Mel. Thank you, thank you, everyone. And you just don't know what that means to me this morning. <laughs> just this morning. Just this morning. You didn't know that my printer went on the blink. You, you, you didn't know that. You didn't know that it was a struggle, and I'm praying, please, Lord, please, that electronic stuff, I'm not all that up. And up with, I can't, I couldn't handle it on my phone. Don't know how it will work out with my tablet. And you know how I am. I'm a little old school here. And so it finally came through and I just made it here in time to hear uh, Brother Jim Bailey come and bring greetings and welcome from God Almighty. Oh, what, what soothing that was. But then I, 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 I missed out on being able to have some of the ministers around here, some of the dedicated saints around here, just to lay hands on me for just a little bit and pray. And, and then on, on Pastor Malk, I said, God, while I was sitting in my seat, please, if there's any way, if you desire this to happen, please, Lord, I would love to have a prayer for me. You didn't even know that. You, Brother Jake, Jason, you didn't even know that. And then I get up here and then God says, I take care of you, my servant. I take care of you. I take care of every single thing you bring. If you would only just ask, I'll be able to. And, and nobody else knew that but me and the Lord. So I just had, I mean, they tell me you got to hold that stuff to yourself. Keep it to yourself. They t but sometimes you just can't keep it to yourself, the goodness of Jesus. Sometimes it just comes out. Glory to God Almighty. Glory, glory, glory. And saints, we've had a wonderful time here. We had a wonderful time last month as we talked about the harvest. And our scripture for last month talked about, if you don't know this parable, how will you know all the parables? We talked about the sower and we talked about the seed. And then we talked about the great harvest where the Lord will be taking us all his fruit, his sheep. Up to be with him there. He says I go away to prepare a place for you. That where I am. Ye will be also. Yes Lord. Yes Lord. Wonderful time talking about the harvest. Even one of the Bible studies. Was from 2,000 miles ago. One of the ministers in our ministry said. I'd love to come and be able to bring word. What God has touched my life with. And we asked him. Well, well we give you that access. And it was a beautiful Bible study. And we roll through harvest time. We don't leave it. We just roll with it because we're constantly in the state of harvest, if we're honest. To a time uh, that the world should set aside. It did at one point. But you know how the world is. If, if God starts getting some glory, the world wants to take it away. And so we roll into the time or the reason to give thanks. A reason to give thanks. And that's where we are this month. Thank you so much, Brother Alex, to bring word about giving thanks, why we do it, and then why you do it. Thank you for that word, just the word. And like you said, you know, thankfulness is something that when it happens, you can't ignore it. When somebody else is thankful, when they say thanks, you can't ignore it. It does something to you. Either you agree with it or it just grates you if you're not in that. And so thank you, Brother Alex, for bringing that forth. This will be our month of talking about this. This, yes, will be our month of talking about thankfulness. And our scripture for the month is going to be from the book of Luke 17, verse 15 and 16. Our scripture for the entire month is going to be Luke 17, 15 and 16. And that is our theme, which says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice, glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. A theme for the month. That preaches all by itself. All you got to do is say it. But our theme for today, today we have a theme scripture. Our theme for the month was that, but our theme for today. Our theme scripture is going to be from the book of Romans, chapter 1 and verse number 21, if we could. And it simply says here, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Having said that, we give honor to that same God, the only one true, wise, omnipotent, omniscient, ever-knowing, ever-present, 
ever-powerful, true and wise God. We give honor and glory to him. And you know what, saints, the more you allow God to pour himself into your life, the more you find a reason to thank him for so much. You make room for that. And that's who we come and give thanks to this morning. We also give thanks to all of those who have gone along before us. Those in the word, those who weren't in the word, who for hundreds of years, even thousands of years, counted the words of God precious, the spirit and the testimony of God precious, and have lived the life so that we today could have that same word, real and true to our lives. And lastly, of course, we give a thanks and honor to all of you who are here today and even through the restrictions that were heightened and they said no more than uh, 25 in gatherings. And you said, I even so, Lord, I come. We give thanks and honor to all of you here and those of you who are watching there uh, by way of electronic media. Facebook, YouTube, whatever is going on. Like I said, I'm a little too old school here. Yes, but we do give honor and thanks to you. And having read our theme scripture, let us pray. Lord God, almighty one, all loving one, ever present for us, one. All knowing, God, we come before you and we lift you, we extol you, we praise you, we magnify you, God. We bring the thanks as the word that was shared today, for you alone are the worthy one. You, almighty God, you, God, are the only one worthy. And so, God, we present ourselves, and we were nothing but clay, dirt scooped out of the ground, and you, you breathed in us the breath of life, you gave us the ability to be in your image. You gave us a living soul, almighty God. You did that. And God, then you gave us purpose. And God, you gave us direction. And we come before you with thanks and praise and glory and turn to you and say, Lord, at this time we ask that your word that is preached, that is shared, return not unto you void, but let it touch every one of our lives. Let it accomplish in our lives what you perfectly intended to do. Let it go in and sink deep. And God, let you be the one who plants, touches, waters, and gives the increase. We do. We do. And God, we do claim that. We claim it. You said if we but ask in the presence of two or three, if we were there gathered in your name, you'd be there in the midst. And you said that we could ask. It will be given unto us. So we ask, God, that that is accomplished in our lives. And this we do pray and claim in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So really uh, touched this morning, saints, simply by the presence of God. God, it, we know that God always continues to make all the difference. It's amazing how something that is nothing becomes something when God is on the scene. It's amazing how where there's no hope and there's no possibility of deliverance, when God's on the scene, he makes all things possible. It's amazing how God alone can only just be there. He doesn't even have to speak. Speak. He just is there and he makes the difference. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. Something that the saints and his children never want to give up. They never want to let go. God be there with us perpetually. But as we go to the scripture for today, we're going to start here at Romans chapter one, verse number 18 is where we're going to start this morning. And the Bible says here, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. 
for the invisible things of him. <laughs> the invisible things of him. From the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. And verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkening. Verse number 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Professing themselves to, to be wise, they became fools. A title of the message today is Romans uh, one and a reason for thankfulness. Romans one and a reason for thankfulness. And here we are at part number one this morning. Part number one, Paul exhorts the Romans that the visible takes us to the invisible. The visible takes us to the invisible. And you know, the book of Romans is such a beautiful word of the Lord. Such a beautiful word word of the Lord. It, it, just to provide a little background here, this book is reportedly written on Apostle Paul's third uh, journey, uh, missionary journey, and we know that this book, in writing it, he was writing it specifically to the Romans. There's so much on the background on this, but I am under a mandate to go through this message. And Rome at this time was what they called the largest megapolis in the world with a population of somewhere around a million people. Yeah, it, it's dwarfed by what we talk about nowadays. But back in those days, this was it. Rome is what was going on, if you wanted uh, to know. It was very contemporary for its time. It had theaters. It had gems. Yeah, gems. And <laughs> of course, the Olympics, of course. It had art centers, diversities of people, and uh, something that you can't escape, whether it's radio, social media, TV, whether it's driving past somebody's yard today. It had politics. It had politics. And as Apostle Paul is writing uh, to the Romans at this time, some 25 years, give or take a few, after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, there were many needs that needed to be addressed with uh, the Romans, uh, the ones new in the faith. This, this is clearly seen by the scope and length of this letter. Many needs that needed to be addressed amongst these new Christians who were in Rome. And he would address the, the law being fulfilled in Christ. That needed to be addressed because not everybody had the opportunity and the blessing to walk with them. So they needed that communicated with them. Tell us how Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Messiah, you call him, fulfilled the law that needed to be addressed. He needed to address Jewish Gentile relations that because what they had been taught before was old. Now that Christ has made all things new, address that apostle Paul, would you please? He also needed to address the definition of sin. The definition, what sin really is. He needed to address that the Lord Jesus Christ is the answer. Yes, he's gone on to glory, but he is still the answer for all that want and choose to believe in him. And finally, finally, he had to address salvation. Salvation. But here in chapter 1, after greedy, there was a lot of needs to address. So here, starting off right in chapter one, he greets them and he talks about he'd love to be with them. I can't wait to get with you and talk to you. And after he said the obligatory greetings, letting them know that he loved them, he gets right to it. And he talks about, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Gets right to it. Right after he tells I can't wait to see you. And it's wonderful to be writing. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And then he goes on and he talks about the power that's in this gospel. The power that's in the gospel of Christ. 
And then he talks to it by, then he gets to it by talking about living right. And then he goes and he visits relationship. Relationship. Right off of the bat, verses 16 and 17. Right off of the bat, he addresses those things. And then our scripture for today. As we're talking about thankfulness, our scripture for today, as he goes to verse number 18 from Romans chapter 1, to the Romans, he says, for the wrath of God is revealed. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Against, against what? Against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And uh, he didn't say that they didn't know what it meant. He said that they hold it in unrighteousness. In unrighteousness. And then he said in verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. The penalty, he addresses this, the penalty of ungodliness and unrighteousness, the penalty of ungodliness and righteousness is the wrath of God. That is the penalty of ungodliness and unrighteousness, it is the wrath of God. And he says that it is revealed from heaven. Then he says that which may be known of God is manifest, made known in them, for God hath showed it unto them. How? How did the Lord God Almighty, not only did he manifest it in them, but he showed it to them how did he show it unto them how is it made known unto them how does and did God show it to them is there a great voice that spoke to them as they were walking along the way a plane flying in the sky with some sign being dragged behind it did it come in the mail no 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 in verse number 20 he tells how he showed it to them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. The things that are invisible that you would say you can't see from the Lord are clearly seen. He goes on to say, being understood by the things which are made. That's how he showed it to him, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So that they are without excuse. The invisible things are seen and understood by the things which are made. The things that are seen, they beg us to ask the question. They appear to us, they're here made known to us so that we could ask the question, where did that come from? That's what we're supposed to do. How did that get here? There is a process by which that got here. There is a process by which all things have been made. There has been a process. And ultimately, ultimately, the question becomes not just how did it get here, but who did it? Who did this? Who made this? You know, uh, some years ago, I remember being in a class and uh, one of our, uh, I was younger, so it was junior high or high school. But I remember the teacher saying, I want to tell you people something. And she went on to tell us, she said, everything that man, man has made has an example in nature. Men aren't so much creators as far as originators. Men adapt. We adapt and we take things and we, we might fine tune them for a certain purpose. But they get here because we went to look at the other example. In fact, nowadays, nowadays when there is a malady, whether it's scientific, 
whether it's something that needs to be engineered. Nowadays, what people do is they say, hmm, if I haven't experienced this before, what can I go to to get the answer now? What can I turn to? Everything from medicine, yeah, you eat this leaf, it's in nature, it helps you. You eat this fruit, it helps you. Everything from even transportation. I'd like to fly. Well, what flies? Birds fly. How do they fly? Let me study a bird and I can learn aerodynamics. To transportation. To transportation. Wheels, even combustion engines, uh, explosions, even, believe it or not, nuclear power. Even so. Everything. Rockets taken off. Oh, well, is there rockets in nature? Of course there are. Are there explosions in nature? Of course there are. Everything that we men have done, there is an example in nature. This means that the visible things always take us to the invisible. And then verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Now, see, God has made himself plain enough to man to take away all excuses for ignoring him. Whatever excuse there is, he's made himself plain enough to take away those excuses. Nothing has just happened. Nothing was out there and then, oh, wow, that's kind of neat. That just happened all by itself. Nothing has just happened. There may be a choice in men not to seek him, but we can't deny the evidence. We can't deny the evidence that God is. Part two, the lessons of unthankfulness. There is a progression here, saints, that it's talking about in these few verses in Romans. And that's what Apostle Paul shared in this little excerpt that we have from Romans today. There is a progression. The mighty, invisible God, he shows himself in the things that are seen. And that same God many times is not acknowledged. And when this God is not even acknowledged, he is not given the glory. He is not given the glory and the honor due for his wondrous works. When he's not acknowledged. When he's not even acknowledged, he doesn't get the glory for his wondrous works. Ken to acknowledgement and glorifying, kin to that is thankfulness, being thankful. And the Bible says here, neither were thankful. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither we're thankful. Don't, con don't confuse those. Those are separate cases of offense to God. There's one thing to know him and not glorify him. There's another thing to know him and not glorify him and not be thankful. You can be thankful and not give people their due. I've seen people uh, be thankful and they, but they limited how much thanks they were going to give to whatever they had received. And I know I'm not alone in that one. So, kin to acknowledgement and <clears throat> kin to acknowledgement and glorying is being thankful. Now, the Bible says that they were neither were thankful, and the question becomes: Why would God hate this so much? Why would God hate this so much? Because this isn't the first time that he has been shown unthankfulness for what he has provided. There is a progression here. Let's talk a little bit about God not being shown thankfulness for what he has provided. We're going to start at a certain place in the Bible, and we're going to go backwards. We're going to start at Habakkuk. Let's start at Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 15. 15 and 16. The Bible says, they, they take up all of them with the angle. They catch them in their net. They gather them in their drag. 
Therefore, they rejoice and are glad. Just imagine a fisherman, if you would, having a net, throwing it out, casting it out, holding on to it, dragging it back, and having a fish, which is what he was doing it for in the first place, and being glad about it. Now, in verse 16, the Bible says this. Therefore, they sacrifice unto their net and burn incense unto their drag, because by them their portion is fat and their meat is plenteous. We have many examples of this particular exercise today. Any success man may have tends to glorify the worldly component rather than the spiritual forgetting a certain admonition. Any success men generally have, we tend to glorify the worldly component of it rather than the spiritual. It's simply, simply exercised or exemplified and uh, somebody may get a job. And because they get a job, they have money. And because they have money, they're able to buy whatever. And when they're able to buy whatever, uh, they turn back and they're thanking the job. When the question has to be, you didn't have that job at a certain point of time. Who gave you that job? Well, you know, I got this job because I, uh, I went to school and I got this job or I got this profession or I got this business because I, I, I. We tend to glorify, give credit to the worldly component rather than the spiritual. And the list goes on. How come you were able to run so fast? Well, you know, I watch my diet and I do my training. How come you're able to accomplish and pass all these tests? Well, you know, I study real hard and I, 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 I do all these things. This is what gave it to me. Giving glory to the worldly component rather than the spiritual component. Forgetting an admonition in the Bible for the book of Psalms, chapter 127 and verse number one. And the Bible clearly says here, except the Lord built the house. They labor in vain that build it. Except God say, okay. It's fruitful or futile, fruitless to go ahead and get started on it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. You know, I uh, appreciate uh, repairmen and uh, doctors and lawyers and everything that I might need of service. But I know for a fact that if God don't give the victory, then it's a waste of time. If God doesn't anoint the hands and allow whatever surgeries, medicines to work, it's a waste of time. We've known these situations before. They've tried, and it says, well, it didn't work. It didn't catch. It didn't take. It didn't, 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 didn't. Leaving out the component, God, please, we ask humbly that you would help, that you would restore, that you would deliver. God, that you would bless. The list goes on. And yes, we've seen it. Slow to give God the credit and quick to give God the blame. Oh, it didn't work out. God, why? Why, why, why? Yes, we've seen it before. We've seen it before. From the book of 2 Kings, chapter 17 and verse number 15. 2 Kings, chapter 17 and verse number 15. And they rejected his statues and his covenant that he made with, his fa with their fathers and his testimonies, which he testified against them. They rejected his statues and this covenant that he had made. And they rejected his testimonies, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became, followed vanity and 
became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. They became vain when they stopped giving God that glory. From Genesis, let's go back even further. From Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 5. The Bible says, And God saw the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every imagination of thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. Every one. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. Continually. So all the way back as far as the garden, we see that this has been a pattern. Unthankfulness is truly a spirit. But let's go further back than that. From the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> Chapter 14 and verse number 12. Isaiah 14 and 12. Even before Genesis, the Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I, I, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. It, it, would, it would just show as many things as God had given the angel, this angel, why not thank you, Lord? Thank you. I see you in your glory, omnipotent one. Thank you. Verse 15. <clears throat> the answer to that spirit. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. When God first answered it, that answer for that spirit has never gone away. Thou shalt be brought down to hell in the sides of the pit. Yes, pride is an enemy to all things godly. Pride is an enemy to all things godly. One more time. Pride is an enemy to all things godly. Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 18. <clears throat> the Bible says, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride, destruction. A haughty spirit, a fall. Job chapter 41 and verse number 34. Pride being a spirit, yes, the Bible says that's all that's in the world. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Yes. Job 41 verse 34 talking about the Leviathan, talking about that serpent, talking about him whose, prides are, whose pride is so click, they're like scales and no air even can get in between it. That pride is that solid. Job 41, 34, the Bible says, he beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. He is the king over the children. A pride. That's enough to make you put pride on your hit list. I got to make sure I don't have pride reigning in my life. That's enough to say pride, you know, and, and the world says you got to have some sort of pride in what you do. Well, if you mean this pride, you're wrong. You have this pride. You also have this king over you. So when we are unthankful, when we are unthankful, we actually cut God out of the picture. We sabotage our relationship and turn from spirit life, spirit-filled life, to fleshly death. And we turn selflessness, selflessness into selfishness. When we are unthankful, we go from 
We, to me, when we are unthankful, we go from provision to division. When we are unthankful. Part three. Unthankfulness leads to foolishness. Unthankfulness leads to foolishness. And the last part of the scripture says, but became vain in their imagination. So the final part of this verse in this progression where the Bible says, and their foolish heart was darkened. Or to say this another way, their non-understanding thoughts and feelings became hazy and vague in its destination. It was taking them somewhere, but they couldn't completely clearly see where that destination was. Non-understanding thoughts and feelings became hazy and vague in their destination. And, and yes, saints, we have seen this before. This is a choice. And if, if and when we watch this long enough, we see the consequences. Their foolish heart, if they become, if we become vain in our imaginations and our foolish heart become darkened, we begin to see their consequences manifest. Now, first of all, God knows what we need. He knows what, he, what we all need. From the book of Titus, uh, chapter 2 and verse number 11, the Bible says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. God knows how and what to give those who seek him and how for us to find him. God knows. This is why parents, most parents, can't say all parents, but most parents, try to teach their children to be thankful and to say thank you. They want their children to choose life. They want their children to to choose life. It's also why any good relationship has this as part of their foundation because they want their relationship to prosper. They want their relationship to prosper. They don't want disrespect and distance and the distance that unthankfulness brings. Parents don't want it. People in relationship, they don't want it. And God doesn't want it in us. He doesn't want the distant relationship. He doesn't want the lack of respect. He doesn't want us to have that fleshly death relationship. He wants us to have that spirit life relationship. Uh, last two scriptures here as a wrap up. From the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 12, and verse number 21. So what if you have found yourself in this place and it doesn't prosper you? It doesn't benefit you. In fact, it hurts you. It hurts us. What if that be the case? 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse number 21. And turn ye not aside, for then you should, for then should ye go after vain things which cannot profit, nor deliver, for they are vain. In verse 22, for the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it hath pleased the Lord to make us, to make you his people. Verse number 23, moreover, as for me, the prophet goes on and says, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you, I will teach you the good and the right way. Verse number 24. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things. Consider how great things he hath done for you. Each and every one. Consider every single one. And then fear him and serve him in truth with all your heart. Amen. And finally, finally, the testimony of one healed, touched, and provided for. The testimony from the book of Luke, 
chapter 17 and verses 15 and 16, our theme for the month. And one of them, now we know this is talking about the ten lepers, but if we just go to this right here, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Verse 16, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. May God add a blessing to his word. Give the Lord a praise.